Today's video is one of the most important informational videos that you could ever see. A lot of people get their health evaluated by symptoms, and by symptoms they do examinations like blood pressure checks, A1C checks, thyroid checks, and all sorts of panels. But there is one very simple test to actually determine how healthy you or your family members might be, and it's as simple as just taking a spinal x-ray. Let me explain. The biggest thing is that your nervous system controls every single thing inside your body. For your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, or even a simple cut on your foot to heal, your brain has to send the signals down your spinal cord and out through the nerves like that to every single organ and tissue and cell inside your body. So to determine how well your nervous system is functioning, you need an x-ray to determine that. And in this video, not only are we going to share with you how to read an x-ray and what chiropractors look for when they do look at your x-ray, but also what you can work to do to help correct these things to restore function, to get your body function the way that it has to be doing. The information brought to you guys over my 15 year career have been used in my clinic for over 10 years now. You can see by our Google reviews, we have over 300 five-star reviews. So obviously this information works. Why this might save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills. Time Health Newsletter came out with an article that stated that United States citizens pay the most for healthcare system. And despite the money being poured into the system, Americans aren't healthier than people in other countries. It was just the opposite. In fact, they had the shortest life expectancy, the highest infant mortality rate, and also the highest obesity rate. Their life expectancy here in the United States was an average of 69 years compared to most other countries of 72 years. This is what led to medical bills actually being the leading cause of bankruptcy, even though 85% of Americans actually had health insurance. So this information is important, so pay attention. So before we get into what we look for on an x-ray, we have to talk about why some chiropractors do take x-rays and some don't. It all comes down to two different types of chiropractic. We have corrective care chiropractic versus pain management chiropractic. We did a whole video about this. If you wanna know more information about that, click on that link right here. The biggest thing that chiropractors, whether they're pain or corrective care focused, the number one thing we look for is how to determine, detect, and eliminate subluxations. Subluxations are the interference of a nerve that is actually controlling how that nerve might function. So that is the primary goal of a chiropractor. And a lot of chiropractors do that and detect that without x-ray imaging. There's multiple tests to do that. If we actually wanna see corrective change to your spine, we have to take x-rays, not just before, but after. And I'm gonna show you what we look for in a corrective process to actually help restore function for longer periods at a time. So the first thing we look for to determine if there's disease building within a patient or office is structure of the spine. When it comes to structure, your spine has to look a specific way. It has to be straight from front to back and from the side, there has to be three distinct 45 degree angles. And not because I want it to look that way, but because the spinal cord's actually anatomically shaped that way. So if you wind up losing the curvatures, whether it's in your neck, your mid back, or your lumbar spine, that can actually slowly start to stretch out your spinal cord, like stretching out a rubber band and that kind of stretching and damage that stays there on the spinal cord can accumulate to decrease function over time but the most important curvature in your spine is actually your cervical curve it's actually called the arc of life for a reason the reason is because it's the closest one to your brain so if you have a loss of curvature in your neck not only can that make it harder for your lower back to heal but over time that can actually create interferences that can become more systemic causing things like fibromyalgia or even ms because the demyelination of the brainstem and the nervous system which can create symptoms so this is the first thing we look for when it comes to structure of your spine the other thing we look for is how straight your spine is from front to back too the nerves come out equally to the left side and the right side of your body they go all the way down your fingertips and your toes equally so if there's any shifts in your spine from left to right that could be creating pressure on your nervous system whether it be your spinal cord or the individual nerves that can create symptoms like numbness, tingling, any other symptoms as well, can even create dysfunction in the organs, which is why we have to determine how straight your spine is and if there's any weaknesses within those joints as well. So another thing we need to talk about is that sometimes patients say, hey, Dr. Randy, I just got an x-ray from my primary care physician. They're like, I was just in a motor vehicle accident or I went in because I wasn't feeling well and they took x-rays. That's great and all, but the difference between what we do and what the medical profession does is that they're gonna be more so looking at your spine for any kind of pathologies, fractures, or dislocations, they're not trained the same way as a chiropractor is to actually look at the structure of your spine and all those little subtle differences. Also, on top of that, even though they can determine if there's a fracture, 
they're essentially gonna send you to some place where they're gonna possibly do maybe physical therapy, injections, medications, or nothing. That's why when we come to the chiropractic office, generally after an accident, an injury, or even an automobile accident, the patients come here because they expect correction of their spine. For instance, in 2013 from the journal Spine, there was an article that stated for patients who saw a medical physician for their back pain, 42.7% eventually ended up in the operating room, whereas just 1.5% of patients who first saw a chiropractor had surgery. Nearly all of the chiropractic patients were able to avoid spine surgery through natural conservative treatments and to be as specific as possible, the better the outcomes. One of the biggest myths about spinal degeneration is that it only happens because the patient is getting older. We did a video about this on our channel called The Myths About a Spinal Degeneration and if you want to learn more about it or watch that video, you can click right here. The different phases of damage to your spine is going to be normal, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Why is this is so important to look at when we look at x-rays? how much pressure there is on a specific joint or nerve in a specific segment of your spine. Things that we can't see on an x-ray is the actual disc itself. It's basically cartilage filled with fluid, therefore it does not appear on the x-ray. But why it's important to actually look for this big spacing is because it's gonna open up this hole here called a foramen in which the nerve can come out with little to no interference. So the reason why that's important is because the bigger the disc is, the bigger the hole in which the nerve comes out. When your disc spacing is big like this, that means that there's little to no pressure on that nerve, which means that you shouldn't be expressing any symptoms, which means that you should be functioning at a high capacity, having little symptoms, and hopefully on little to no medications. But now, damage is actually directly related to structure because if your spine shifts out of its normal alignment from front to back or from the side, that's gonna create pressure that actually creates degenerative disc disease. So structure comes first, then damage comes later. Because if your spine is no longer curved and it's straight and all that weight from your head and gravity is now coming down on those joints in your neck, you can start to get degenerative disc disease forming. And if that disc gets smaller, well now you can guess it, the hole in which the nerve comes out starts to get smaller as well. So now this starts to create pressure on the nerve, creating interference, which can now lead towards symptoms like tingling, which is now phase one. It's something more superficial, just like pain or tingling or something that most people might just be taking a Tylenol or covering up with a simple over-the-counter medication. If it gets worse and we don't actually get to the true cause of these issues, phase one can now turn into phase two. And the difference between phase one and phase two is just time. But the reason why it's just time is because now the disc has been compressed for a longer period of time. The body has to now lay down calcium and start to create bone spurs to try and protect that joint. But unfortunately, it adds even more weight to the disc, which can actually cause the nerve and the hole to get even smaller. So now something that was a tingling can now turn into numbness because now the nerve is functioning at even less potential than it was at phase one. And then you can guess it, there is a worse phase than even phase two, which which is phase three. And phase three is basically almost bone on bone, or if not completely bone on bone, the hole in which the nerve is coming out is completely damaged or crushed. The nerve is no longer functioning at all. So what was little to no symptoms over here in the normal phase turns into tingling, turns into numbness, now turns into disuse or disability, which can also turn into full-blown organ dysfunction and damage to specific organs and tissues and cell inside your body. And why a corrective chiropractor will take x-rays on your spine is because we probably won't be working with people in this phase, but in phase one or phase two, with a combination of physical therapy and chiropractic, we can actually help restore those angles, taking that pressure off your nervous system and getting your body functioning better than when you first came to our office in the first place. So one of the best ways that we actually can determine if there's subluxation or damage to a specific joint isn't by taking an x-ray with you standing or laying flat, it's actually by you sitting. The reason why this is the more effective than the standing or laying flat approach is because now we're loading the patient's spine with their own body weight. And now with you sitting down, we can actually look for any kind of underlying ligament weaknesses, any kind of shifts that weren't noticeable before. So with this, we can actually be even more specific in creating the best corrective care plan for you in working on getting your body back to 100%. So when we go through x-rays with a patient, there's four main views that we look at and then one additional view that we look for for actually determining spinal subluxation. So those different views, there's two from the side and there's two from the front. The ones from the side are called lateral views and the ones from the front are called A to P views, meaning from front to back. The most important view that we actually look at when we start off is the lateral cervical view. That's going to be because of that arc of life we talked about earlier in the video. When we're looking at this, there's a couple of things that we're looking to determine. Once again, the yellow curvature shows us exactly where that 45 degree curve has to be. And then we measure your neck with these individual red lines. The red lines are not only measuring the backside of the posterior body of the spinal column, 
loop, it's also lens is determined where the ligaments are that are making up the front part of the anterior spinal column. So this is essentially what's keeping your spinal cord inside that spinal column. Those ligaments are called the posterior longitudinal ligament. So when we're looking at your x-ray, we want to see these red lines matching up from C2 all the way down to C7, where the individual vertebrae are matching up with each other along the back side like this. If those ligaments get weak, just like we're stretching out a rubber band, the vertebrae can actually shift back. And what that shifting back causes, it causes spinal canal stenosis, which is narrowing of the spinal canal. That can create a lot of damaging neurological symptoms like numbness or tingling and eventually lead towards disuse and disability and weakness within not just your joints, but throughout your body. When we're looking at this, you can see, not only are we trying to see if these red lines match up with the yellow line to determine where your cervical curve is, but we're also gonna measure it out of 45 degrees and to see what percentage loss of curvature you are. The point is to restore as much function as possible, so we wanna see the patient's head shift back for this C2 vertebrae and the red lines will then now match up with the yellow line. But that's not the only thing we're looking for. On top of that, we're looking for damage, which we looked at as well. But on top of that, what's even more damaging and the most damaging to the nervous system is forward head posture. Forward head posture is when the head shifts like this. There are studies that actually dictate that every centimeter your head shifts more than your shoulder, it's gonna add 10 pounds of pressure to your spinal cord. So imagine having a 10 pound bowling ball in your hand and every centimeter it shifts is your arms outstretching. And that's what we're actually measuring when we look at the back of the C2 vertebrae compared to where it is, compared to where it has to be. So that's gonna be one of the first things that we look at and work on correcting so we can actually help restore neurological function. A specific study from the 2004 Journal of American Geriatric Society revealed that having this anterior forward head carriage can actually increase your risk of mortality. This is why it's so important we actually focus on taking the forward head posture out first. From there, to make sure that we don't confuse the patient, we stay with the next side view. So we talked about the lateral cervical, now it's gonna be the lateral lumbar that's next. And in the lateral lumbar, there's only five lumbar vertebrae compared to seven in the neck. This time we're also measuring from the back of the L1 vertebrae and the back of the L5 vertebrae. And when those vertebrae and those lines intersect, that also should be creating a 35 to 45 degree curve in the lumbar spine. On top of that, this is a very important area where we do see spinal degeneration, namely in the L4 vertebrae or the L5, which is most common. We could also see some ligament damage due to the body weight of the person. And if the vertebrae are shifting forward, once again, if it's shifting back, it could be causing spinal canal stenosis. But if it's shifting forward, it could be causing something called a spondylolisthesis. That can be also creating neurological compromise to your spinal cord and the nerves, which can also be leading to neurological symptoms. If you don't know what that means, just talk to your chiropractor and then he'll be more than happy to share with you what to look for. Or watch more of our channel. We have tons of informational videos all the time. So now that we looked at the lateral views, there's two more views left that we look at, which is gonna be the A to P views. So when we pull this up, now we're actually just trying to see how straight your spine is. We put a yellow line in the middle of the C2 dense process, because that should actually mark where the center of the spine really is. So we use that as a landmark to show you exactly where straight would be. From there, we measure from your top C1 vertebrae off the C2 to C5, then down to T2 and down to T7. This is gonna create three separate angles that we can actually determine, which you should be within two degrees, if not closer to zero. Just remember, any degree of separation of the blue line from the yellow line is gonna be putting neurological compromise or pressure on the nervous system that could be creating a subluxation. From there, we only have one more image remaining, and that's gonna be your A to P lumbar. And your A to P lumbar is gonna be viewed the same exact way as your A to P cervical, where we're actually gonna be looking at your right hip and your left tip, the top of sacrum, and actually seeing if your body is actually shifting to the right or to the left. Once again, there's a yellow line going straight up and down in the middle of the image. We do that from our vertebrae and the top of the sacrum. That actually determines where your spine is in its straightest position. From there, we will actually see from L5 to L3 and L3 to T12, and that's gonna give us two more angles. The last thing we also look for on x-ray isn't just how straight, but we're also looking for any rotation in your pelvis. We're looking to see if one hip might be higher than the other, if your sacrum's rotating or if your pelvis is rotating because this can be creating short legs. Having a short leg can be creating symptoms that a lot of people do experience in their body. If you want to see and learn more about the difference between short legs and that what kind of spinal issues that can cause somebody, make sure to click on 
the link right here that explains all those fits. But those aren't all the x-rays we take. We even have one more bonus x-ray to be even more specific with the patients that come in our clinic. That x-ray is actually taken after their first adjustment where we put a two pound head weight to determine if there's any underlying ligament damage or how strong that person's neck is. We call this a stress film. With a stress film, that person only after being adjusted because now the ligaments are loose, we will put a two pound head weight on top of their head to actually see how their neck is gonna shift. This will determine what kind of body weighting we put on the patient to determine what is the best course of action for correcting their spine. When we take this image, if their neck is weak and they have a two pound head weight on their head and their head starts to look up, that weight might be too heavy for that person's neck and keeping that weight there throughout a whole care plan without fixing or correcting what kind of weight they should be having can be making it longer for them to get the correction they need in their spine. Other things that we look for is because if the patient has any kind of weakness in their spine, when you add weight, their neck might buckle. This is the worst case possible because if their neck is so weak and is building damage, and by putting two pounds, a standard head weight that most people should be able to put on their head and not have any problems with, if their neck still buckles, that means not only do we have to strengthen the neck more, they're gonna have to do more exercises at home, and it's gonna take even longer to correct their spine. This is something that we use to determine how long their care plan should be, how much rehab they should be doing, and their frequency of visits. So x-rays are determining a lot here. Not just damage structure, but it's also dictating care plans. It's also looking for health issues. It's also determining our best approach for them to get as healthy as possible for not just them, but for their family's sake. So x-rays are vitally important when it comes to spinal corrective care and chiropractic care in general. So there you have it. There's a lot that goes into viewing an x-ray and why chiropractors decide to take x-rays and the specific angles we're looking at. Sure, we might be just delivering adjustments in specific segments, but those are specific segments based on x-ray, based on damage, based on structure that are meant to actually help increase function more so overall. And the more you increase function, the less symptoms and side effects that person's gonna have and the higher quality of life they're gonna have. We wanna be as specific as possible when we're realigning those vertebrae and how we go about retraining those muscles to set and hold that. That is one of the most important reasons why we take x-rays in the first place. It's not just to deliver an adjustment, but it's how you deliver an adjustment. Somebody once said to me, it's easy to take a hammer and a nail and take that hammer and put the nail in the wall anywhere. But the reason why we pay contractors is because they specifically know where to do that and how to do that. And that's no different when it comes to chiropractor. So you might be seeing people out there cracking their own necks, adjusting their own spines, causing damage to their spines that we will eventually see on x-ray, but it's up to chiropractors that specifically see and know what's going on to actually work on correcting that just like the person you would hire to help fix your house. At the end of the day, that's a lot of information to digest. If you have any questions about that, feel free to write us a message in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to this video and feel free to contact us if you have any questions. And if some of the stuff's over your head, go see your chiropractor, ask them these questions, make sure that you're going to the place that you feel you're gonna get the best results and let us know if you like this so we can create more additional content for you. In the end guys, it's up to you to determine what's the best course of health for you and your family members. So keep watching these videos, keep um, liking and subscribing, and we'll see you in the next one. And keep it cracking.